Yeah. All across the globe, you better cross the road. When you see us, you already know that we train to go. In a group, I can promise that we'll take off your dome. Find you in the back of an abandoned bus, sending you home. Merciless team of heathens, bred to remove non believers. You either with us or between the brush with the heaters. Ain't no rush, you believe us. If you see us, just between us. A secret society, a masterful killers in mass. The cast can give. Hey guys, welcome to the lab. Another episode of Sundays with the Clink Room. I'm uh, very excited to be. Uh, joined by one of my uh, newest favorite artists, COD Designs, also known as Steve. Uh, Steve, how are you doing today? Very good. How are you? Good, good, good. So uh, before we commence with the regular uh, Sundays with the Clink Room festivities, let's give uh, the uh, Clinkers a chance to kind of get to know you as an artist. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your background in art and in design? Sure. Um, I go by COD that stands for Creator Destroy. Mm -hmm. um, I've been designing for over 15 years. Started out in fashion design. So first job was with Calvin Klein. And then I moved to Converse. After that, I did sportswear. Cool. And that was all licensed sportswear. And now I am in the licensed um, pop culture space. Cool. cool. I am an art director. And on the side, I do... A lot of fun little like parody mashups and you know side gigs and i think it led me to uh the clink room which mm -hmm. you see now i get to like flex this generic pop art power <laughs> <laughs> yeah you kind of snuck up there um a little bit so i would kind of categorize you as almost like a clink 2.5 artist you know you um you, you didn't start right away when uh 2.0 relaunched but you're you got a pretty powerful uh, portfolio now um i think it's it's close to 25 almost 30 hats either in production um currently or up for pre-order um but yeah you um do, do you have any um favorites or any standout designs um with the clink room i'm wearing my favorite <laughs> okay cool. um yeah. looking forward to uh a beer power that mm -hmm. just released so i would love to see how that embroiders every everything is coming out real nice i um yeah i'm enjoying uh what what i'm doing is vector to come out in 3d in a sense is it's like more charming than than t-shirt design yeah yeah the canvas is a little bit different but like like you said the outcome with the embroidery and the levels and all that's different uh stuff casey's kind of a master at uh taking an image and and making sure that it it gets applied properly on a hat but yeah your power series is definitely going to be a fun one you got the caffeine jumping one way and you got the beer jumping the other way i think together it's going to be a cool little picture if you end up getting both um your 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 god series is kind of interesting too Thank uh, you. for me uh garbage god and um i think you're expanding it picnic god and uh yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you, you're you're doing a great job so far. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of your work. Can't wait to kind of see you, uh, kind of evolve and uh, really build that um, portfolio of yours. Um, what is what would you say is kind of your inspirations um, in terms of uh, your designs? How do you kind of approach the creative process? It's interesting. Um, I watch a lot of anime and I read okay. a lot of comics. But I also have a huge background in 80s and 90s film. Okay. So I just have a like an Eminem style vocabulary of puns, jokes. Mm -hmm. I, I listen to the way kids talk now, and I apply that to my job and <laughs> in IRL. <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. For your job. Uh, so I, I stay on top of trends. Like um, someone the other day told me. Uh, why would anyone want a pickle on a shirt? And I'm like, you don't know what's going on, do you? <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Massive and yeah, girls are buying shirts with pickles on them in mat like massive quantities. So I was like, that's following trends. Whether it appeals to like you know a hardcore hat collector now, maybe not. But that's kind of the point of setting a trend. I didn't think anyone was gonna think Garbage God was funny or cool until they saw it. Like I had to like, I had to convince the the community. Yeah. You know, um, I think that's kind of how trends work. You have to convince people that your vision is cool, and mm -hmm. I think I 
done a pretty good job at doing that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, collaboration is kind of like a big part of uh, Clink Room's like central ethos. Can you kind of discuss your experiences working with other artists and how does it kind of influence your work? Sure. Um, it actually helps me a lot. Um, being a father and a full-time art director, as well as uh, someone who goes to a few conventions a year. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. I mentioned I travel. So I do like New York Comic Con, San Diego, uh, and a bunch of fan expos. And I actually do work with fan expo. So I, I create their merchandise. Um, being that I'm always on the move and I'm always on the run, I don't exactly have a lot of time to dedicate the massive list of ideas I have um, and the amount of requests I get. So it actually just speeds up my process and makes me feel more fulfilled mm -hmm. as, an, as a creator in general to have a lot of my ideas uh, worked on by other artists I respect. And I usually tend to gravitate towards those with the same like ethic as me, like their work ethic is strong, they're fast, uh, and they're always willing to make edits. Mm -hmm. That's and so that, that obviously led me to, you know, my friend Obvian, who did Caffeine Power with me, uh, Sierra, who we've done a bunch of hats together, mm -hmm. Italo, who's done um, the Cursed Kings, that was a fan favorite, so we got a follow up for that one coming. Um, and, you know, Creature's always sending me ideas and um, Eric is sending me ideas and flashy, like a lot of people have been sending me ideas and I'm always open to listen. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you mentioned your, your background a little bit in like t-shirt design. Um, but what, are there any other challenges in terms of, uh, translating your art for a hat and <clears throat> how do you overcome those? I tend to want to, uh, be more impressive with the art by having, um, you know, perspective and shadow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, differences of line width, but I know that's not exactly going to translate now that I've done a few hats. So I've been simplifying my design, simplifying my ideas and kind of just working within the realm of, uh, you know, it has to be visible from a certain distance. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, Clink Room offers like a platform for artists to turn their designs into like tangible products. What advice would you have for emerging artists looking to get uh, their designs brought to life? Well, I would say what seems to be working is uh, effort and quantity, right? Um, I was uh, given someone a quote that helped out a lot. There are professionals who are entering in the space and there's amateurs entering mm -hmm. the space. And the difference is a pro is working at not getting things wrong. <laughs> amateur is someone who is working really hard to get things right. Yeah. So the difference is we've already done the work. Now we're just, you know, um, making minor tweaks. Like, so if you see something from like a pro and there's a slight nitpick, that's an easy fix. But when you see an amateur, um, they have to keep working until they get to the point where it's just a slight color change, slight line width issue, you know. Um, I think if you put in the practice, you know, which is the effort, the amount of submits, uh, and talking to us, asking those of us who have been around and printed a bunch of hats, you will find that we have a lot of good things to say. Awesome. So always have your doors open. Yeah. That's a, that's a great answer, man. Thank you for that. Um, Clink has a really strong like online presence. How has social media and the internet kind of a, impacted your career as an artist and your connection uh, to the fans? Well, I would say it's helped me immensely. Um, if it wasn't for me being available, you know, what, what would I be giving out? A business card, my cell phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Reach me if you have any any art inquiries. The nice thing is if I do something that someone likes, um, I'll get contacted for freelance. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing is for someone like myself who can adapt different styles, I can attract multiple types of clients and I don't get pigeonholed into someone who only does socks, hats, t-shirts, jackets, yeah. shoes. I could do all of it as long as I keep trying and keep posting. Nice. 
Um, are there any other artists or uh, designers you kind of admire um, and how off, and how have they kind of influenced your work? Well, as far as artists are concerned, I grew up with Jim Lee. Um, okay. Huge inspiration of just like reading all of his books, meeting him at conventions before I started, you know, visiting cons as a guest artist and signing. So like just he, like dealing with him and seeing how someone like myself could rise to that kind of occasion and, and treat fans was huge. It like, it set me apart from what I, what I thought was like, so, like, oh, there's no way I'm going to work for Marvel and here I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working yeah. for Marvel. Yeah. So it's awesome. like, um, but now he's at DC and he's a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> Funny but, how it, it changes that, that quickly sometimes. But it's all good. Um, I still respect him so much and um, I love his attitude and I love how professional he is and how he can be public and private at the same time, which is like, I, I truly respect that. So that would be like my way up here, like inspiration of life, whereas my peers are my biggest inspiration. I like to see what everyone's doing um, kind of, if I feel like I fell asleep for a week, <laughs> Mm -hmm. My peers make sure I'm awake. They're yeah. like, "Hey, we're submitting like 400 new things. You better, <laughs> you better work." <laughs> you put it, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool, man. Th so, thanks for doing that uh, with me. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's kind of get right into the uh, Sundays with the Sundays with the Clink Room festivities. Okay. So, I'm we're gonna cover real quick. So they did an, uh, a dead stock drop this week. So basically. These are going to be kind of like uh, the leftovers from the pre-orders. So let's jump into it. I think you have a couple on the first slide. So, yeah. So you're wearing uh, Caffeine Power and Garbage God. So those ones kind of stick out to me right away, obviously, because you're here. Um, uh, do, you, do you have any thoughts on the rest of these six that dropped? Sure. Um, I, I love I love the uh, Dead Prez Crypto. Um mm -hmm. I, I just think that's really cool. I didn't know I could do panel hats. I think I need to start doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, Raven Lunatics for uh, 40 Swords kind of sticks out in my mind as uh, the the white panel. Uh, that oh, yeah. yeah I know I, know I got to start doing some panel hats, but that that helps me see that something like that is, is possible. Mm -hmm. um, I always love like Jason V's artwork. Um, yeah. I've seen quite a few of those. Um, are they Frenchies? Yeah, Frenchies. I love the hack of lanterns. That one's, that one's really cool. I had an idea like that at that time, and I was like, oh, I'll let him. Sierra's such a good guy. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Yeah. Um, I just, I think that's it. I'm not gonna talk about mine. If you like my work, please buy it. If not, it's all good. <laughs> I don't think it <laughs> Yeah. Um, the Yokobo one's good timing, right? Right right in time for um, Mexican Independence Day. Oh, then, right. Isn't that today? I think it is today. Oh, my or goodness. I'm sorry. Tomorrow. This airs on Sunday. Uh, you yeah. can edit that. <laughs> so, no, nah, that's cool. It's cool. So it, it just passed, but still great timing. Um, always great to kind of celebrate that. Uh, Hackalaner is actually sold out. But uh, anything thematic on the right, like during the right time, is perfect, right? So... Maybe the pre-order for this one uh, wasn't ideal for Halloween, but if you can get right. it right now, and, oh, and that kind of shows in the sales, the, there's there's none left. So as of recording, that's completely sold out. But that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> this this is a great group. Frenchie stance. I mean, the Frenchie series has um, spanned. It's got to be close to ten hats now. <laughs> um, it would be interesting to see him do a Frenchie I mean that's probably his dog his actual dog I'm assuming yeah. but like just to see Frenchie's done in different colors like that one's fawn so maybe like a brindle or uh a black one or yeah uh, like just it would be cool to see it mixed up I know it probably goes against whatever dog he owns so right no <laughs> um, I get it that's his muse right. but yeah um, like a recolor would be cool if he's going after Frenchie owners for sure different mm -hmm. different color ups yeah yeah for sure but uh, yeah, all right. So let's see what else drops. So um, we got um, Style and Phil, Seahawk, uh, full count with the uh, continuation of the uh, Rocket Pop series, this time with a watermelon. Uh, Deadlock by Jason V, 
Hot <clears throat> Wilers and Ice Flow. Um, any of these hats kind of stick out to you? I love Hot Wilers. That's that's really cool. It's like something I would wear. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of like one of my first minor league hats, um, the El Paso or some Chihuahuas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love I love dogs. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go right to that. Um, the colors of the watermelon rocket pops are great. I mean, even the the watermelon colorway is mm -hmm. beautiful. I mean, these are all cops right here. Like, yeah, the uh, material, the art, everything is top notch here. Yeah, the, the Ben Franklin with the discovery of electricity, like they did like an x-ray version, I guess. The first one, he was just like regular color. This one, he's, you know, he's yeah. zapped. So I think that's like a real cool continuation. Uh, Hot Wilders was the, the one I picked up um, on this page. Uh, something about it, like he did a really good job, 40, of using like the canvas given like. Yeah. So like it's really easy to make like a, I mean, you would see like the mistake made where people just, you know, make like a really long and stretched out dog, but he really right. packed it into that position, which is. Which and it's is always very difficult to go left to right on a slant mm -hmm. because yeah. then you're, then there's some type of balance issue. Like you want to, you think it's going to fall over or what about the top left, you know, or the top right, mm -hmm. but it just works. I don't know. You did it right. Yeah. And then the deadlocked one is so cool. Uh, Jason V. Um, you see sometimes like those uh those deer in in heat they get i don't know if you've seen it but i've seen times where uh they f they fight to the death and then they actually get caught in each other's antlers and it really I've seen that, yeah yeah so that's like kind of like a nature nature's metal moment so that's really cool my only critique on the rocket pop series i always feel like the stick is too small realistically That'd be annoying to eat, <laughs> having the stick be that small. Um, but it is a cool series. Like he's he's definitely done well with that. Um, that's probably like the third or fourth one easily uh, in that series. So yeah, I think these are all uh, great hats here. Honestly, you can't go wrong. I mean, every hat I've gotten, I love so far. Like, yeah, I'm, I think I'm a collector now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's part that, that's part of the problem when you get like high on your own supply sometimes, but. You know, you get addicted to um, making your own stuff and, and 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 then seeing who else is good and like, oh man, like some of the stuff's just undeniable. So I got five coming this week. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right, I think there's one more page. Uh, yeah, so we got Killdeer, um, PDF Scribbles. I'm not too familiar with their name. Uh, Boot Knockers, Jason V, Das Booters, Baby Boomer, uh, Aztec Cali Bear. And the Crescent City Spirits. Um, anything here that kind of sticks out to you? I've always loved that Crescent City Spirits by Flanagan. Yeah. It screams Nola, right? It's, it is, yeah. It is, it's amazing. The colors um, and subject matter is great. So, I don't know. That's that's instant cop right there. And um, those two swinging designs by Jason are great. I mean, that was – those – his and um, Brad's – were my early inspiration for when I was doing swinging style designs. I don't know if you saw Butter Up or uh, uh, Sushi Slammers or Tonkatsu Dingers. Oh, yeah. Sushi Slammers, I definitely remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you did Hawaiian Ice as well. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Swinging ones are always cool. Uh, Jason, Jason V with that one, it reminds me of like a Juan Soto almost. Like I was saying – I was paying yeah. tribute with mine. I knew I wasn't creating a series, but apparently uh, I created a food averse. Hey, <laughs> if, it, if it works, why not? Right. I think people love um, kind of having to be able to collect like a series of stuff. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a great job. Boot knockers is the only one <clears throat> as of time of recording on this page that is completely sold out. So you slept on that one. I feel bad for you. That is an excellent uh, hat. It's just perfect. It feels like um, what, uh, the Brewers City Connect or something. Okay, yeah. Right? Like that colorway? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Das Booters or Boot Knockers? Yeah, yeah. Like, is that is that right? I don't. I can't remember. <clears throat> I've seen yeah. Brewers use that, that colorway. Yeah, it's it's kind of... It works perfectly. It's, it's not exact, that, but it's pretty damn close. Like, yeah. if you wore that to the stadium, people would be like, 
what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <You> get that. <laughs> yeah, those uh, those um, beer mugs are hard to finish. The boot ones. There's a lot of alcohol in that one. Boot and rallies. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of your um, summary of uh, the drop. Uh, dead stock drop so uh, anyone who's looking and missed out on the pre-order um you've got a final chance to hit these um for uh for an instant purchase you don't have to actually wait for them to come in so um in terms of the pre-orders these six hats we're going to cover right now they end for pre-order before they get sent to production uh midnight eastern so you have a couple hours um, if you're watching this live or um, on actual Sundays. So uh, Golden Sobrero, Inner Glow, and Rocky Mountains Calling. Do you have any uh, favorites here? I think my favorite is Rocky Mountains Calling. Um, okay. Based on the colorway, um, and I do like the hidden image within the landscape. I think uh, Raphael's been doing a few versions like this mm -hmm. of landscape with an inner or like a an inner landscape with an outer sh uh, shell of a yeah. creature and it's it works um, i would i would i would get that one if uh if i had a, a more money <laughs> <laughs> half oil is like an interesting artist like you take a look at his like create like his collective works it almost looks like he, he's like a collective there's so many different styles he utilizes he's um, I was looking at yesterday. I was randomly uh, kind of hanging out with Forty yesterday. We were talking about how um, his style just like some some of it looks like like it's completely different. And he has a lot of different uh, series. He's got like a bunch of animals in circles. He's got like those vintage looking um, logos. He's got uh, uh, the like like you mentioned the, the silhouette landscape style um <clears throat> uh hats and yeah he's all, he's kind of all over the place you can't really peg him um when you see him like like oh that's a you know half il you know design like he's, he's kind of all over the place i respect cool. that you know yeah. it's um there's there's a lot of different types of artists some find a style and they stick with it right and that's yeah. great you know that's their wheelhouse um and you just kind of master that and then people will hire you for that style but mm -hmm. then there's someone like myself who was i was so attracted to so many different things right yeah growing up i drew a lot of beavis and butter characters but i also drew simpson characters and i you know like by being able to draw like all these different types like even like x-men like like 95 cartoon series i my friends asked me to draw them as multiple different characters so yeah i developed this this wanting to copy like not in the bad sense like mimic like my favorite styles and artists yeah. and by doing that i've adapted and became like someone who can like i can try something different now and start something something fresh and then go back to something i'm more comfortable with but it does attract more of a like a wider audience yeah for sure that's awesome all right so let's take a look at the next three uh mc night panther and jungle paradise so um i guess uh, taking yours out of it um do you, anything else kind of uh, stick out to you i'm gonna have to take Raphael out of this one too <laughs> <laughs> really fond of not seeing that back leg <laughs> yeah yeah um but uh, i love uh mc because it's so playful and it's so colorful i think that will embroider really well because it doesn't make use of too many highlights and and shadows and it's just gonna look really sharp yeah and i think i don't know if he intentionally or unintentionally started like his hip-hop series with this so i think he started with b-boy Mm -hmm. was his first one and now he's got mc so maybe he's just moving through all the different elements of hip-hop that would be really yeah. cool to kind of see him do um but yeah I, i'm i'm with you too uh night hunter was one of those kind of ones that didn't read uh perfectly but it'll be interesting to see how it finishes uh in the final pre-order and then uh, i think you guys did a cool job on uh the jungle paradise so sierra loves like the mesoamerican um style so it was kind of cool to see you uh, jump in there 
Um, that one, like, I can't really see like where it begins and starts with with you and him. So that's like the cool part of the collaboration where you kind of just have something um, that looks completely different, kind of outside what I would we've, normally expect to see you guys do. We've learned how to uh, design like each other. Okay. Process right. So like I showed him one of the vibe ones i'm calling it like i think that's kind of like casey dubbed it that like the vibe series mm -hmm. where like i did this line art of a landscape and i yeah. did a few and then i showed sierra and i showed my method and the line width and stuff and he just he knew what to do i mean if you understand the tools in mm -hmm. illustrator it doesn't take long to pick up and he's really smart so he figured it out quick yeah it's almost like a like a thumbprint mm -hmm. almost looks like a thumbprint but and you guys have like a whole uh, design out of it. So that's a uh, really cool. I, I'm really interested to see how this thing embroiders. Like I think um, from far, it, it'll be legible and it'll read and then up close, you'll, you'll get to see like that fine line detail. So I'm excited for you guys for that one. I think our first taste of that style was really Aztec. Okay. If you've, that one should have come out already, but I think there was some delays, but so when you do see that one, you'll get, like our first true line art style. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull. Okay. I'm seeing it now. Yeah. That one's a little bit more. That one's got way bolder lines, mm -hmm. I think, compared. So, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, October. So, hopefully soon. See, Casey's not going to take these unless he thinks he can do it. You know? No. They're yeah. He's definitely. I mean, in, in terms of, like, from mock-up, very rarely do you see it. Uh, turn worse for the final product. Usually it's better, yeah. to be honest. I mean, Casey's not going to prove it right. if it's if it's not going to turn well. So once he gets the swatch back and tells him how to um, make changes or, or, or move forward, like that's, yeah. that's kind of how it goes. He's and, he's done thousands of hats. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I used to, um, it, we call it samples. I mm -hmm. would catch, um, I would catch samples at work and I would make comments to the factory and it would adjust from there. So, yeah. you know, he's, if you do it enough at some point, you just know. Yeah. You know what you're looking for. You know, the common things that you got to have to uh, beef up. So yeah, working with him is, is, is always a, a good thing. So you're in good, you, you put your art into good hands basically. Oh, absolutely. All right. So let's see here. <clears throat> Moving on to Monday morning crits. So we got 10 <laughs> designs. Uh, first one up clinker, Kevin, Kevin Green is bringing the Grand Salami. This is awesome. Um, I worked with Kevin. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we worked at the same uh, licensed sports company together. Okay, cool, cool. And I really do hope that this is his first one, and this is great. The texture is not going to work, though. <laughs> yeah, the, sal the, the salami. Uh, the texture, is, I love that. I Maybe there's a way if you can kind of do like almost like a camo pattern of a few different pinks mm -hmm. to make it look like, you know, like what he's going for there. But, um, yeah. as of, as of the vectors I'm looking at now that that won't work. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, you're giving Casey a nice task, but I, I hope this gets the votes. I, I like it. Yeah. In this picture, do you think he's left-handed or right-handed batting right now? It's kind of hard to make out, right? It looks like he's left-handed. Good mm -hmm. illustrator. I I think he would follow it properly. Um, yeah, that is a lefty swing. It's a lefty swing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He might be backwards though. It looks like he's batting right-handed, but he's got a lefty swing. Mm, it could. But, uh, well, yeah. I think the problem might be is the top hand. Yeah. The top hand came off. Yeah, that's fine. The top hand came off. The bottom hand's still on the bat. Yeah. Interesting. Does he look, does he look more hot dog than salami to you? <laughs> I think he was forcing the wordplay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It does. I mean, oh, man. How do you, like, yeah, salami comes like that, right, originally. Yeah, the big well, brick, and then yeah, you like a slicer yeah. for the sandwich. <laughs> Cylindrical brick of meat. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I think it's for the sake of, you know, the the pun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, A-level pun. I think the art needs a little bit of tweaking, but uh, sure. it's it's definitely a fun design. So I know he's uh, tried a few. Uh, I know he's been really working at it. 
So I, I do hope he gets something soon. Yeah. I I want to encourage everyone who's new and for sure. And or who has submitted tons of summits to keep trying because it, it is worth it when you get it. But I'll tell you something, as someone who's had quite a few, there's there's no stop. No, no, no. There you is gotta, no you uh, once you pop. <laughs> yeah, stop. you gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. But uh yeah, hopefully uh Kevin keeps submitting and a uh, great job on this one. Um Lounge Lizards by Seamus the Skunk. What do you think here? I didn't even need to hear Seamus the Skunk. I knew this was him. <laughs> yeah, you could tell. It's just right away. Yeah. This is right in his wheelhouse. Um I I am I am intrigued by like the the boldness that he has to do these styles and these ideas. So um, I hope it gets the votes. I I love that it's different. Mm -hmm. It's so different. And and he keeps bringing that and he keeps proving us all wrong. If like in the beginning I was like no, that's not going to work or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a Hall of Famer. So I'm not doubting him anymore. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. Yeah, it's got to be the first iguana hat, right? I don't I can't off the top of my head. I can't I think can't of any. I can't think of one. I'm such sure a, it's easy puns for that though. Yeah, there's such a like gross looking <laughs> freaking creature. <laughs> like it, I don't know. They're, you see them falling out of the sky sometimes when they're um it gets a little cold in Florida and they're huge. Um yeah, but like there's just so much personality with this. I really like what he did. Uh um do you think he needs like one of them Frank Sinatra hats? <laughs> that could help. That could help. Um, he's got like the disco collar too. Like, That's just he's so going, much. He's got more of a seventies vibe there. Yeah, yeah. He's, this one's so like interesting. It's like this is a conversation piece. Like if you're wearing this, someone's gonna stop you. Like what the hell are you wearing? I wonder if it could use like an olive in the martini. That could work. Or even yeah, yeah maybe like even a stir stick or something. But oh wait, they eat flies, right? Maybe like a fly, <laughs> <laughs> flies on a stick. Like in, like instead of the olive, like yeah. it's a fly stuck on the stick. I don't know. I'm just... I, th I think iguanas eat fruit. I think is that right? I think I don't know. I'm not an expert on it. Yeah, I'm not an I expert. To, I like I like to have little plus twos, plus threes. This is already a plus one. Yeah, you got the pun and then the art to match, so it's it's good. Yeah, lounge lizards. Yeah, great job, Seamus. All right, uh, pickleball. They chose this one. All right. Yeah, you and uh, Sierra back Sam's again. Favorite. <laughs> this is whose favorite? This is not Sierra's. This is mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. We did two versions, uh, like a full body. And speaking of like ugly things to put on a hat, a pickle. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I hope it goes through for the sake of, like, I know a lot of people who love pickleball. And the I would sports, totally rock this playing pickleball. The sports uh, popularity is definitely growing fast. Um, I got to get out there and try it. It looks fun. It's usually played with four people, right? What was it? It's oh, usually four. played with four yeah. people. Yeah, 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 it looks fun. It uh, is. Um, so the phenomenon is, you know, I go to this one spot in Florida Every year, uh, it's right by Disney. And we have like a timeshare, and then I go to this one spot and at the beach that we go to every year. And both have basketball courts and tennis courts, and that's been dying lately, right? Like not as mm -hmm. many people playing pickup games, especially five v fives. It's hard to get that many people. That's where I would be. I'd be playing basketball. But I noticed both places in the last year had to build pickleball courts, <laughs> and it's filled. That's interesting. Do they, do they always have the walls? Is that part, that's part of the game, right? You can hit it off the wall. I think it's just a net, like I, I think okay. it's like a simple, like, okay. like oh, you're talking about wall ball. That, that I'm sure there's always a place for that, you know, okay. like handball or wall ball. But they have to make these are like miniature tennis courts, almost like yeah, than ping pong, but yeah, small the people, tennis. The people I saw playing it, they were in a room or something, but there was a net in the middle. And yeah. you could hit it to each other, but they were letting it bounce off like the back wall and then hit it off the wall. So, you the ones you playing is just strictly that's, outside. That's racquetball, I think you're talking that's about. Racquetball. I swear they were playing pickleball, but maybe I'm the wrong. Ball looks like um kind of like a spotted wiffle ball. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, and so Maybe I'm misremembering. All different amalgamations of this game at some point, but the one that really took off is this like 2v2 yeah. tennis style, you know. It's I, I don't know. I just hope uh, people enjoy it as much as we did because we had fun. Yeah. Would they? This wouldn't even be the first time we saw a pickle on a hat. The Portland Pickles um, make a bunch of hats. But, yeah, this one uh, in the clink world, I think, would be the first, if I'm not mistaken, uh, pickle on a hat. But I, I'm a pickle lover, so I'm all into this one. Me too. <laughs> um, I'll have my friends even ask when we're, like, eating, like, just, hey, order uh, extra pickles on the side, and I'll yeah. just eat the pickles. So, Have you ever um, had <laughs> hot pickles? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm into it. So this one. For me, definite, definite. Hopefully, uh, pass for me. So definitely, it, like it gets gets through to um, the pre order. So let's move so. forward. Night crawlers uh, by Wind Studio. Any has initial one, thoughts? Has this one been submitted before? I feel like I saw it. I'm not sure, but it's not that different than the Scottsdale Scorpions logo. So I worry oh. about uh, the licensing for it. The only thing that kind of differentiates is that little like uh, drip of venom, but it's very close to the uh, Scottsdale Scorpions out of the uh, Arizona Fall League. I mean, I, I really like the colors on this one for sure. Yeah. I love dark, dark shadows, which is really cool. That comes yeah. across. Um, I always, you know, um, have been a big like. Um, I, I don't know how to explain this better than I don't like drips on hats. <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay. I always say it in that just like if you can avoid it, you know, yeah. just or not just hats, but like even on shirts, it's been a like an ick for yeah. a long time. Fair enough. So other than the drip, it's it's really nice, and uh, it, I think he's come a long way with his uh, his line with it's it's looking much more executable. Yeah. I think I'm right with you. I don't think the drip really adds anything to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the familiarity of the the logo, like like the scorpion, is such a um, a strong symbol. But I do worry about it getting uh, and passing through the legal. I would actually um, encourage the outer um, pin stroke to mm -hmm. be more like a silhouette of dripping, right? Like if it was like. A, that was drippy yeah instead of an actual like white drip coming from the tail like if like part of you know like the tail and the and the, and the claws were dripping a bit but not drips like like uh, not like actual physical drips but like the outer stroke was drippy mm -hmm. not melty drippy it's cool this thing almost like the way he colored it almost makes it look like it's a machine or it's like mechanical like not even an animal it does look metallic. I mean, yeah. you could definitely go with something like that, like a like a Terminator type yeah. Thing color. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, great job, Wynn. Let's let's move forward. Well, right, ancient architects. Whoa. Architects um, came up twice. <laughs> you guys are you guys are uh, on fire right now. <laughs> um, and uh, I did not I did not know you were um, so popular in this before uh, I asked you. I did not. Uh, know that you were here so often so <laughs> it works out it works out in your favor but uh, uh yeah tell us um, a little bit about this so this was um an idea that sierra had worked on originally without me which i i always encourage you know if you don't need my help like i just end up becoming a crutch but mm -hmm. he was i guess a little frustrated that the first version didn't go through so i expanded on the idea just a little bit i thought it was there, right? Remember all those like conspiracies of like ancient aliens building the pyramids? I'm not saying anything in regards to that. I'm just saying, what if like it was more in depth with that conspiracy? Like, you know, we add the ancient pyramids as like these tech lines, kind of expanded the idea a little bit further. I think he just had random tech lines emanating from it, but I made it just like a plus one. To the yeah. idea yeah it's really cool because it's it's almost like a mixture of some of the stuff you guys have done so you brought up aztec mm -hmm. um a little bit earlier so it's kind of like that and actually i got this one just came in, in. <laughs> yeah i get uh, 
like it's like almost like an expansion of this series. The yeah. uh, uh, I think he called it T- 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 Kong. Yeah, Tutankhamun. Kong. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like a like a collab of a collab. It's like a mixture of all things. And then with the uh, recent news of Mexico showing the aliens, I'm sure he's going to have a field day with that. <laughs> so um, it definitely might be like this expansive series of like you know um uh, of stuff for him to kind of play in that universe so I'm, I'm excited for that but yeah this one's really interesting i like the colorway you guys picked um, the, uh, yeah i think that's one of the things that i brought to the table on this his art is always solid there's not much i have to do yeah when he when he gives me a drawing it's really just you know um color planning mm-hmm. you know i'll tell him like don't worry about the colors so much right now like there's something about like if you just block out the spaces. When I get my hands in the file, I'll have my way with the swatches, and that's what you're seeing here. Yeah, no, that, you, you did a great job on that. Um, sometimes they uh, they overdo it with stuff like this, where they try to hide t- some stuff with like uh, glow in the dark or whatever. Yeah. But I think you guys no did a great job. You don't need it for something like this. So he's got such a like a like a like an expression <laughs> he's like he actually looks like a ruler like you know um yeah i think you guys did a great job oh and aliens are real popular right now apparently oh, yeah i mean people can't can't stop talking about them right now um we'll leave the the mexican uh alien bodies off the table for now yeah <laughs> definitely uh, definitely a thing right now um Gum swallower once again i already knew i actually saw this one when he posted i was dying yeah. laughing yeah <laughs> I was like, it you're is. crazy. <laughs> he has, he lives in his own world, and I respect that. I, I want to be in that world sometimes so I can create <laughs> new stuff instead of being so like trend focused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to just create my own little worlds. That's how I respect the hell out of him for that. It's so cool. I just, as soon as I saw it, I, I, it you just get reminded of like kindergarten teachers just yelling at you, like, don't swallow your gum. Yes. It can take you eight years to digest it. Uh, um, and this one farted a bubble. That's, yeah, this one, this guy, he doesn't give a, he doesn't give a shit. But uh, yeah, this is definitely a, a fun design. How do you feel about the stroke around the chimp itself? Do you think that's needed? You know, I do a stroke around like everything. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's just more to punch up the dark areas because then it it just be a like a dark blob on a hat without some type of color punch. And mm-hmm. also, I I think I use the outer strokes like here as a nice way to tie in like a brim color or an under color yeah you know? like it really does help um tie into like some of the hat color choices you're going with mm-hmm. yeah. i'm a fan of the the big strokes for me i, yeah. I like it like a thick stroke at the outside uh or even a thin one just just like you said just to kind of punch in the color yeah you can tie in yeah it's like yeah. the button yeah, uh, he did a great job. I, if I were to predict, I think this one makes it through, but I think so we'll too. see. We'll see. <laughs> I've been wrong before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tiki Rock, do designs. Um, that is really cool. Um, I still think um, this, like this style that I think he's been working with, is 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 a little much. When I say that, I mean there's a lot of lines that are close together. Mm-hmm. when you can just make shapes yeah you can make shapes of darkness um and then that would get the same powerful feel of it being like this style that he's going for like i i think it's cool i i think the smoke might be tough to pull there's off a, there's a lot of it it almost it doesn't almost like go through the design enough. It's kind of like behind it and then a little bit in front, but there's nothing that really sifts through. The art is great. Um, the I think I just have I think I have issue with um, you know the fact that it might not be executable. Um, mm-hmm. Then again, you know I could be wrong because Casey sees much better than I see, which is why I hand them off much more complicated work than this. And then I think it's the colors for me. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not in love with the colors either. I, I, I could be persuaded to wear more naturals, but I don't think I'd want this part to be that light. 
is because I touch it so much. Oh yeah, the brim. Yeah, I touch my brim so much. I don't want yeah. like, my messy hands just all over it. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm really like I really want to like this. I think it's like drawn really well. I just think there's certain elements that need to be touched up. I think the tongue almost feels like an afterthought or um it's it's almost not it doesn't have the same level of detail as everything else. So that's right, and that's thing. why I think like that's a, that area will work. And if you were to treat the other areas similarly, it would feel more cohesive and executable. Yeah. And then the mustard cloud, I'm not really not it really ties feeling into the uh, under. Yeah, I see that. But I'm not a fan of that color, unfortunately. Yeah, it's like a cloud of mustard. Yeah. Um, but it's the, easy to run out of colors on designs like this. Oh you yeah, real fast. <laughs> yeah, but the actual tiki guy himself, like I think, it's drawn excellently. It's like, dope. Did a great job. Definitely yeah. need to simplify areas. You know, like where. You have four lines in the head for like a stripe pattern. It could be two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to think about stuff like that, like especially that horn, right? Even just looking at that one horn, that could just be one triangular warped shape instead of it kind of branching off. Yeah, you got like the dotted lines. Too much, too and much gradient detail. fill. Yeah. It's such a small area. Yeah, definitely. But. Um, glad to see him around, man. He, oh, yeah. he, you could like almost bank it that he's gonna make something, uh, hit crits and one hit pre order. Like he, he's one of those guys that I instantly thought of when you mentioned workload and and uh, submissions and stuff like that. He's kind of come on strong, you know. Recently, I would, if I was to give him like real solid help on this one, and I feel bad because I bagged on it a lot. I think this is an idea that is close, and I. And I think because if that's like, if it's like a tiki torch, right? Mm -hmm. That fire doesn't read fire on top of his head. Let's start getting more flame elements. The smoke instead of smoke is either a smoggy smoke because of fire or it's flames. Yeah. Uh, and then we add more oranges and like more pops of color into it instead of the like the dull tans and, and the earth tones that are happening. Let's make it like look like it's like real fiery off of like a black background or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. That'd be cool. He does take a cool perspective with the the head of the guitar sticking out. So I think he's got he's he's almost there. Yeah, but it's just like small little edits. So yeah, um, wish him good luck. And uh, moving forward, we got uh, <coughs> Castle Be Weary by Brad Rayson down under and Todd Maisie. Can't really, can't really uh, say anything bad. I mean, I don't understand the subject material but yeah. it's so well done like brad knows how to make a hat he mm -hmm. has one of my first purchases and his uh his vector style is so clean like i can't hate anything he does because that and i don't want to and not try and hate on anyone or anything i'm saying like i can't find any fault <laughs> there's nothing wrong like that this is a pro Versus an amateur, you know. So even if I don't resonate with the subject material, I'm like, man, you couldn't have executed it any better. Yeah. So these are castle wearies. So the already we got a level pun. So castle be wary. Um, they are flightless bird from Indonesia, also found in uh, New Guinea. So um, I love learning. Stupid yeah. animal facts. So I, I'm I'm all about it. As soon as I saw it, I knew um, that this was probably some crazy bird. Uh, that he's there's a Brad is from um, Australia. So um, yeah, so just something to be um, wary like, of, I guess. <laughs> you know, something like this. Do the research because um, you're not getting better art than this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, colors are top notch. Yeah, and those uh, feet are definitely um, weapons. So, yeah, and it shows great movement. Like I love, I love that. Well, we got two shirt, uh, two shirts. <laughs> That's me from being in the shirt world. Two hats in here with movement. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, great job, um, Brad and Todd. This one's a fun one, and we got to learn about the Castleberry uh, bird. So watch out for their feet. Uh, <laughs> Abominable trophy. Um, 
Heather Green back with another one. What do you think? Uh, this one, it. I'm not sure. I'm finding the, like the idea other than maybe, it, it just thought it was like a, cool subject matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? abominable snowman, on a, on a on a trophy mount, I guess. Uh, this is tough. Um, feels like the face has more care than the outside or the, yeah. the rest of like the, the hair doesn't flow properly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's definitely more attention to detail uh, like a bet like the way it's simplified in the mouth and the nose and the eyes i don't think that translated to the the wisps of hair i'd also say it's very difficult to do a stroke around white and yeah. color like like I'd say like no stroke like that would just be white be a white embroider of hair and it will work it'll pop off of the mounted background which could be like just like thick black outlines and then like a wooden board and then you'll have the head popping off of it so like this could be a really cool 3D piece if it's done that way maybe like the nose is really sticking out too like that would be interesting to see if they can pull that off um, but I, I feel like there needs to, like, she's getting there. I think she needs to work on um, looking at other artists and how they translate, like, creatures like this that don't exist. There's no photographs yeah. of creatures like this. So you kind of have to go off of what's been drawn um, and just see how people illustrate white fur. Yeah, definitely not an easy thing, as you mentioned. Yeah, I want to keep encouraging her. She's uh, she's she's someone that's uh, yet to break through and, and and right there at the cusp. But sometimes with these submissions, you want to really nail down the theme and uh, make sure you're 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 putting yourself in a position to win. So like, pick something that's you know fun and really plays to your strengths as an illustrator or as someone who um, is a designer. And and you know, I think like the subject matters it's a tough one right like yeah um i don't know how popular uh this one could be potentially um so yeah like the yeti stuff is is fun and and uh interesting but like the having one as a as a mounted trophy i'm not sure that that like really like translates or would translate into either voting or um heavy heavy yeah. sales but you know she's right there and, and i want to keep keep making sure that uh we we kind of guide her on her on her way to break through and, and when she breaks through it's going to be an awesome oh. awesome site it'll be worth it yeah just keep trying trust me yeah all right let's see what else we got uh kyle's back who's there what do you think i i feel like um this was discussed the other day um yeah i was watching the other show <laughs> um it's like uh it's supposed to look like we're the, the hat's part of the tree right yeah that's what we're gathering here um it's the owl is awesome i mean i don't even I, i'm i'm struggling with the tree portion <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's tough to like have a good ending for the the bark right like where right. where can we actually stop and where does it start? I, it's like a very abrupt ending. My I think what I, what's jarring to me on that portion is that it's dark lines, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I know this isn't like a realistic depiction, but as far as push and pull goes, right? You got the owl and it's beautiful and it's perfectly silhouetted into this, you know. Uh, hole in the tree so that all can remain black with browns and tans and the, the yellow eyes pop i love that now the outer jagged tree lines either they're jagged and it's not feeling natural that's fine it goes with the owl maybe it's just a darker brown the dark brown you find in the owl so it feels more natural to settling into the hat yeah now that, that would be my uh best possible answer to what's throwing me off about the tree sitting 
on a hat. Otherwise, Al is amazing. I mean, artwork's perfectly fine. It just needs some uh, fine tuning as far as, you know, color placement, you know, thinking about that. And um, I don't, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's where I would end that <laughs> critique. <laughs> you, you, you think um, maybe reversing the colors could help it a little bit. So making the darker brown on the crown so that it, you can kind of so then like the end, owl's end. dark brown is the crown color yeah and then the black won't be as jarring because it'll it'll yeah. kind of fade into it yeah like i'm thinking of um the chameleon hat uh change-ups kind of how it, it kind of just went into the hat it kind of dissolved into the yeah. hat um i just feel like yeah like right now it's it's like a there's like a hard edge to it where there's it, no real fade. Me, I think with the color choice, it just feels like sandwich. Like it's just mm. there, right? Whereas it could blend better if the colors are, are done right, whether it be the crown or the those jagged the uh, lines. trunk lines. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you though. Um, yeah. The, the owl itself is, is a beautiful drawing. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's just an execution point. Um, at this point but yeah kyle uh, <clears throat> great to kind of see you um, back here in the fold i'm a big fan of his work so um, great work. yeah let's see what else we got oh that's it we did it. that was a fast 10. yeah the fast 10. but uh i'm taking the time out and uh spending the time with me to um get get the clinkers out there to kind of get to know you so that, that was fun yeah thank you so much for having me yeah so uh before we go um any any projects or any anything um upcoming disclosed to the people um where can they find you i have a few projects <laughs> okay uh i usually like to just reveal them on my own time okay uh, you know and also i think one of the things that drives me insane is when i release something too early and mm -hmm. i may not have looked at it fully and then people start picking it apart. I'm like, oh, I released it too soon. So I like to have everything ready before cool. I show everything. Cool. So um, regular social media. But uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully uh, everyone gives you a follow. Uh, COD Designs on, on the gram. And uh, yeah, for Steve and Leon, we're signing out, guys. Peace. All right. <laughs> Quick when we bustin' your ass Ain't no jokes to master A definition of death Like you food in the kitchen Amidst a room full of chefs The boogeyman El Kukui The devil's in the details You can't